guys and welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since I've been on here. I was doing the post competition series and then I got really sick and then Christmas happened, but I'm still here. I'm okay. It was a little rough there for a minute, but you know, we're on the other side. And if anybody has any particular questions, they want me to follow up on how that recovery sort of ended because I feel like I'm there kind of right now. Definitely go ahead and leave them in the comments below. But it's a new year, happy 2019 to everybody, and Giacomo and I have been sort of planning out some of the content that we're hoping to make for you guys this year, and I just wanted to dive right in. Later on today, we'll be recording a bunch of podcasts, which I'm super excited about, but for now, I wanted to make this video for you guys. So this is a little bit different than some of the other videos I've made that are more informative. Today, I'm going to be talking about my vegan journey in the spirit of veganuary which if you guys don't know what that is that is when people take a pledge to go vegan for the month of january and i will leave the information in the description below if you want to check that out hopefully by this time this comes out you'll only be like a week into january or so there's still time but when we travel the country and go to the fit expos i give this talk a lot actually about how i became vegan and some of the changes that happened in my life because of it so i was raised in a very poor household. We were constantly trying to make ends meet. We ate what we could get our hands on and a lot of time that was really unhealthy food. Things like tons of ramen, boxed mac and cheese, frozen hot dogs, flaked potatoes. Like, true story, I actually didn't know that mashed potatoes didn't come out of a box. <laughs> I just thought that they did. We drank a lot of milk, a lot of soda, and there was a lot of unhealthy food present, but there was also a lot of healthy food that was not present. So many fresh fruits and vegetables I had never even seen. You know, the vegetables that we had were frozen, chopped peas, carrots, and green beans. You know the mix, you know the mix I'm talking about. And I liked it, but fruits, you know, apples and bananas and that, that was pretty much it. That was the end of the list right there. We were a very, meat and potatoes household, but like a crappy meat and potatoes household, not even like, you know, the good stuff, the whole food, the stuff was processed beyond all reason. I always got lunch at school with the free or reduced lunch program. And from what I hear, the lunch program in the United States has come a long way, but back then it was horrible. Not too surprisingly, I was overweight. Um, much of my family was overweight, so I just assumed that this was, you know, part of my genetic makeup. You look to the older generations to kind of see what your future is going to be like. So one day when I was eight years old, I was at my uncle's house and he was a fisherman and I knew he was a fisherman and had a big boat and I thought that was cool. And my parents and them were all hanging out upstairs and we were hanging out in the kids' room downstairs. And there was a big kiddie pool, like one of those plastic pools on the floor and there was a lobster in it, big lobster. It had its claws banded and all that stuff. But we just kind of hung out with the lobster all day and like played with it all day. You know, lobster's pretty cool. And uh, not too surprisingly to anybody but a bunch of six-year-olds, that lobster, eventually someone came down, grabbed it, took it upstairs, and threw it in a pot of boiling water. And that was so upsetting to me as a little girl. And I remember crying and screaming. It was horrifying. I remember later on in the week, trying to talk to my mom about it and being like, why did you guys do that? She was like, well, people eat animals, honey. And it was the first time I had realized that, you know, chicken nuggets were actual chicken. Now you have to remember, we were like so far removed from what real food was in the first place. I didn't grow up on the farm. It didn't even occur to me that a chicken nugget came from a chicken. So I remember, again, this conversation, I remember it so vividly sitting in the car with my mom and her telling me, well, honey, we eat animals. And I said, but do we have to eat animals? And she said, no, there are some people who don't eat animals. And I said, then why do we eat them? And she said, well, honey, because we do. And that was the conversation right there. And although I was only, I think I was eight and my youngest sibling was six, after that point, I didn't want to eat my pork chops at dinner or my burgers at lunch. And you know, I would sit at the table and be like, I don't wanna eat this. Basically it was like, well, you're gonna eat this because this is what we have. So there was a big scuffle back and forth pretty much every single night at dinner about how I didn't wanna eat the meat. 
and sometimes I would win, sometimes I would lose, but by the time I was about 12, there was no more meat. I was no longer eating meat at all. I was still consuming a ton of dairy and eggs and anything that contained them really, but I was a vegetarian at this point. And that continued all the way through high school. I did continue to gain weight and get unhealthier all the way through high school. Again, in my opinion, just kind of following my path. You know what I mean? I had terrible acne. I had chronic sinus and ear infections. Like it seemed like as soon as one infection cleared up, another one popped up, strep throat, sinus infections, ear infections. Between me and my siblings, we were all constantly on antibiotics. And by the time I was 16 years old, I was about 210 pounds, five foot seven, 210 pounds. And I remember the day I went to the doctor and stepped on the scale and saw that and I was like, oh my God. At this point, <laughs> I was a junior in high school doing the stupid things that juniors in high school do. And basically one of my afternoon rituals was just to uh, get high and go across the street and get Domino's cheesy bread and Ben and Jerry's cherry Garcia ice cream and like house that. Even though I was vegetarian, it didn't occur to me that perhaps that was part of the reason that I was growing so rapidly. And then uh, early in my senior year of high school, I was writing a research paper for my AP English class and we got to pick what we wanted to research and I decided to do my paper on vegetarianism and I stumbled across this website and I think it was like govegan.org or govegan.net and Sarah Kramer, who wrote How It All Began, I believe had a big hand in this so I want to give her credit for that. I stumbled across this website. I had never even Heard of a vegan. I didn't know what a vegan was. I had no idea, but as I was researching why I was vegetarian and explaining that in my paper, this website explained to me how the dairy industry worked and how the egg industry worked and how, you know, these weren't just like happy cows and chickens on farms laying eggs and getting milk. Like it was actually a pretty horrifying process where these animals are treated essentially like production machines and where capitalism is everything and the bottom dollar is life, you know, by any means necessary to get these animals to produce as much as possible. I'm not gonna get into the gory details about it, that's not what this video is about, but I highly encourage you if you're one of those people who are like, well cows like to be milked, then you should probably check it out and see the way it actually works but you know we treat these animals as machines and when they no longer produce enough to be profitable they're essentially spent and we ship them over to the meat industry to become the burgers and chicken nuggets that I had been not eating for about five years at this point and it just clicked in my head and I said I am not supporting that <laughs> and literally overnight I went vegan from there. So from an obese teenager who lived basically off of dairy and eggs, produce had still not really made its way into my life to, all right, well, I guess I don't eat dairy and eggs anymore. And again, didn't know a vegan, didn't know what a vegan was until that day. And uh, I had no idea what I was doing. All I knew was what I was no longer eating. And what this meant was I would go to school and instead of getting pizza, like I would normally get for lunch, I was getting a plain bagel and putting mustard on it. Every, I remember how horrified everybody was by that. First of all, a bagel with mustard is essentially just a big pretzel. So I'll put that out there right now, you. And I was eating bagels, I was eating french fries. I was still eating predominantly crap. It was just vegan crap. But something happened at this point. And a few months later, I went vegan in October. I remember that. And by January, I was down 30 pounds and I was not exercising, I was not eating well by any stretch of the imagination. I was just down 30 pounds and I was shocked by that because in my mind, this was like my path, this was my destiny, this was the way my life was gonna go. And it was at that point that I realized that it was the actual food that I was putting in my body that was making me the way that I was. And then I decided, oh, well, I'm gonna actually like learn something. And dropping weight without trying Paired with all of the questions that I was getting, I mean, I was just, as a vegetarian in the 90s and early 2000s, I was already getting made fun of constantly. When I went vegan, I was just hammered by people making fun of me. Hammered 
by people telling me that I was just gonna get fatter. In fact, I remember a Christmas, the Christmas, shortly after I went vegan, I had an aunt who was a model and she was just stunning in every way. I remember she said to me, all you're gonna eat is carbs and you're just gonna get so fat. And my little 16 year old heart just split in half because I believed her. And I wanted to have ways to fight back against the people who were just shitting all over me every time I mentioned that I was vegan, which I did not mention often. That whole, how do you know if someone's a vegan, don't worry, they'll tell you. No freaking way does that actually happen in real life. All we want is to just eat our food and be left alone. But as soon as someone finds out you're a vegan, suddenly they have so much to say to you about uh, your diet and what you eat and what they eat and why they eat it and you turn into this weird like food confessional situation that's awful. But you know, I could argue against animal rights arguments. I could easily do that, but when someone had a health argument or a, a wellness argument, I had nothing. I had no idea what to say. All I had was this like, well, I was 210 pounds and now I'm 180 pounds. Something is going right right now. <laughs> but I started going to the library and checking out books, checking out vegetarian books, checking out strict vegetarian books, which is what it was called back then mostly, and learning how to put dishes together that had more foods in them. So I started cooking with beans. I remember making my first pot of rice and beans, which was like a new concept to me at the time. And I remember taking extra time in the grocery store to go through the produce section and find foods that I had never had before. Like actually walk through the produce section, not just grab the bag of apples and oranges from the end and leave. I remember finding soy milk and having that for the first time and being like, oh my God, this is so much better than the milk that I've been drinking my whole life. Like who knew? Not me, I didn't know. And over the next, I would say eight months or so, I went from 180 pounds down to 140 pounds without exercising at all. This was just cutting out dairy, cutting out eggs and introducing a ton of new plant-based foods. Now, obviously we all know calories in, calories out. Obviously my caloric intake went way, way down, but I didn't feel it. I didn't feel hungry and I was still eating amply. I never went hungry, that's for sure. But the density of my food was so much less that I was able to eat all of this new flavorful food and still drop a lot of weight. And you know, at this point I fully understood, okay, I'm the one who makes my body shrink or grow. And then I decided I wanted to get into fitness. So all of my fitness journey happened long after my going vegan journey. And I think a lot of people say, when they see somebody who's really fit or jacked or a competitor that's vegan, they're like, yeah, but they built all that muscle before they were vegan, which is a stupid argument in the first place because like, so what if they did? Your body is constantly changing. You would need to give it enough protein and nutrients and training stimulus to maintain that after you went vegan. So that's legitimately one of the dumbest arguments I've ever heard. But also it's not even true. A lot of people were vegan before they got into fitness like myself. My fitness journey is kind of its whole other thing, but you know, being vegan did play a huge role into why I am the coach that I am today. It's because nobody could help me with like fitness type of nutrition. Nobody could help me with that at all. They could help me learn how to lift, but when I was like, okay, well, how do I eat to maximize like muscle gains and strength? They were like, well, you can't because you're vegan. That was back in 2006, I wanna say, that those conversations started happening. So if anybody wants to know more about that particular story, which would be its whole own separate video, let me know, because uh, I think that's where it starts to get really, really interesting. But just to come back to like my whole going vegan story, one of the big things and misconceptions and fears I think people have is that when they go vegan, they're going to eat nothing. They're gonna have limited their palate and their plate so much that they're gonna feel deprived all the time. And let me tell you, I went vegan back in 2003 as a 17 year old who knew nothing. And that couldn't have been further from the truth. I told you the food I grew up eating. It was awful. It was horribly 
bland and boring and junky and dense and cholesterol laden compared to what I ate. You know, within two years after going vegan, my plates were always colorful and full of flavor. I was trying cuisines from different parts of the world that like I had never even considered before. I was finding ways to make foods with completely different flavor profiles also while incorporating a ton of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, fiber, things my body, my little growing body had not ever really received ever. Not surprisingly, a lot of the health issues that I had cleared up and knock on wood, I haven't had a sinus infection or an ear infection in it's been 17 years now. I've been vegan for 17 years. In 2019, I will hit 17 years. And I haven't had a sinus or an ear infection since then. That's pretty incredible for a kid who was just constantly sick. So sick, in fact, that I missed a year of high school total by the end of it. Like, I was a sick kid. So, yeah, going vegan was the best decision I have ever made in my entire life. And that sounds so extreme. Really, Danny? Not eating cheese was the best decision you've ever made in your entire life? Yes, hands down, yes. And I think that's why vegans are so outspoken is not because they're trying to preach to you, but because they went through something so awesome that they want other people to go through it as well. So. Although my reasons for going vegan were purely ethical, I couldn't have given two shits about my health. I did it for ethical reasons, but I would encourage you, whatever your reasons, there's really good reasons to give it a try. So if anybody has any questions, if anybody is thinking about giving it a try, definitely check out some of the resources I'm gonna leave below. But if you personally have any questions about how to go vegan, the best ways to transition, because there is different ways for everybody, do not hesitate to reach out to me. This is what I do, this is what I love to do, is help people find a journey to a more plant-based vegan lifestyle. So don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find me here. Definitely you can leave com comments here and I will answer them. But you can also find me on Instagram is probably the easiest place to get in touch with me. I try really hard to keep up with my DMs there. And yeah, if anybody has any questions or if anybody wants to hear about my fitness journey as a vegan, I'm happy to do that video as well. So happy Veganuary and I will talk to you guys soon.